One of the most interesting and fascinating aspects of electronics is just how much prices have gone down. What I've got here is a LiDAR system by a company called JD LiDAR and uh, it's, this is the high-end model. It's got 360 degree coverage. It costs like $300 and uh, now I'm going to show you how to get it working and what to make of it. When you unbox the thing, the, the first and most important part is this. This is the actual LiDAR unit which you see here it will be turning around and this here is a serial port and also a power connection. And one thing which I like about JD LiDAR is that they understand this. That this will often be used standalone but sometimes you also need a PC. And to satisfy these two competing needs, they provide this unit here. It's basically a UART USB thingy. And you see here you've got the pinout of the LiDAR. And here you've got a micro USB power and an USB 3 data connector. And obviously the first thing you need to do is you need to plug this in here give it a good push and you need to be careful because this is polar so if you push it in the wrong way you might damage this converter box or the cable. For the following steps I'm going to use Ubuntu 18.04. In the first step you see here we need to install some packages. I already have them installed so I'm just showing you the three commands and the versions which you need to run. As so often the actual driver code lives in a github repository under this URL here. And you see here at the bottom a table of contents and some additional information which we will need later. Now our first job is to get the driver ready to run. The first act obviously involves creating a workspace and after that we have to use the git utility to download the source code. You see here git clone and then it just kicks off the normal cloning and downloading process. And at this point we need to run CMake. And then we can run a normal make to actually get the stuff compiled. And finally you need to do a sudo make install which I'm not doing again here because I already ran it before. JD LiDAR is quite smart in that they use the same architecture for a variety of different systems with different performances. So the first step involves visiting the dataset website. I'm playing with a TG15 here. So you see we have a baud rate of 512,000. And we need to note this down because we're going to need this information in a minute. The next step involves connecting the LiDAR to your PC and to a power supply. Don't wonder if it doesn't immediately spin up. And then we push DMESC and we find out where the unit connected. As I also have an ESP32 connected currently, you see here it's TTY USB 1. And then we can run the test application. It's port number 1. It's baud rate number 4. It's one way. And we see that something is wrong. And now we see I selected the different port and if you listen carefully you can also hear the moaning from the radar and information is shown on the screen. If we've reached this point then congratulations the system in theory is ready to go. We end it by sending the normal Ctrl C and then the spinning also stops.
Everybody does it, I know, but I have to. A TAM service announcement. Please like and subscribe. Please, please. Otherwise, this thing can't grow and eventually I have to stop making videos. So please like and subscribe. Thank you. Before we actually do some software work, now we need to do a little modification of the workspace because you need to keep in mind that the scanning level is around here, around the middle of this puck. And so if you put the puck on the ground floor, basically every little thing around it will affect it. So the trick is you use a cup or something like that to get at least some degree of elevation and to get somewhat better scans. At this point, we can switch to this folder, which contains a variety of Python examples. Running them requires you to add a few modules. First of all, you need this thing here, which I already have installed, so I'm canceling the installation. And usually you also need this thing at least, which I also already have, so I'm also canceling the installation. And then at this point, we can kick off the radar. And we see we got an error. So the radar is a bit unhappy. Let's check this again. And we see the radar is starting up. We get init success. And here we get a nice diagram. And now you see here the meters, one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters. And a nice test is just to cup it with your arms like this. And then you see now it's much closer. And so you see now the radar is scanning the surroundings. And now if I enclose it into my hands, you see that the range becomes much, much smaller. And interestingly, if I open it a little bit, you see here that the radar also can scan through the little opening which I've created here in the back with my hands. So this is a very, very accurate unit. And the main problem we have is the matplotlib, which you see the scaling of the axial values is a bit difficult. And be this as it may, the last thing, here's the code. You see here, we start off by importing a large variety of Python variables. And in the next step, you see here, we look for the JD LiDAR and we also have to initialize the matplotlib library. And then the next really interesting part is this here, because you see the method set LiDAR opt allows us to set a variety of options to configure the LiDAR's behavior to our needs at hand. And then this loop which you have here, it's the actual working, the working loop. You see, we call turn on. And if we get a valid result, so if power is available and everything, then we invoke the animation function and we show the plot. And if a failure happens or something, we turn off the plot. And here we see the actual animation function. It starts off by calling do process simple. And then we have here an array scan.points. And we just analyze the contents of scan.points and finally pass them into the leader polar instance to generate the actual diagram, which you saw on the screen before. And as said, I know it might be a bit difficult to look at the code here on YouTube, but you don't need to do it because you see here inside of the SDK directory, which you can download from GitHub, you can find the relevant code for you. So you can always use Visual Studio code or whatever editor you like to directly and quickly take a look at the stuff. Well, I openly admit that the documentation of the thing could be a bit better. But to cut a long story short, if you think about the price, $300 for this thing, a few years ago, technology like this would have cost at least a few thousand euros. I would have eaten my heart out for this when I was in an active service. So either way, I hope you enjoyed this little clip. And if you do anything cool with the JD LiDAR, why don't you leave me a comment and tell me what you did? Thank you very much. See you soon. And don't forget 
please subscribe and like.